When a trucker wants to take a pet on the road, what considerations need to be made in advance? Hello, I'm Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com. I want to show you a photo of our dog, Shorty. Shorty is an American Staffordshire Terrier mix. We don't know exactly how much he weighs, but uh, we're estimating that somewhere between about 80 and 100 pounds. But anyway, I share that with you to let you know that uh, Shorty came to us as a stray. We didn't go looking for him. Uh, we didn't adopt him from some sort of a kennel or, you know, some uh, little puppy mill. But the fact is he came to us and uh, over a period of time we grew to love him. And there was a very strong attachment between people and their pets. I just want you to know that sometimes that bond between a human and an animal can be even stronger than it can be between a human and some people. Okay, so um, it's no guess that a lot of truckers spend a lot of hours on the road and they are in their cab for hours, days, weeks at a time. Sometimes the only people that they see are the shippers or receivers or the people that they uh, meet in conjunction at the truck stops, okay? So there's no doubt that they might want to have some companionship, uh, you know, something that's in the truck with them without actually being another human being. Okay, and so uh, would Shorty make a good dog on the road? No, he probably wouldn't because uh, we'd have to lift him in and out of the truck and he's just not that kind of a dog. But there are different kinds of pets that, that can be truck friendly. Some of them are smaller. We actually uh, met a lady one time, uh, she was an owner operator, and she had three cats in her truck. But let's, uh, let's talk about some other considerations here. Uh, one of those is regarding uh, the different kinds of trucking companies, uh, whether or not the trucking company that you work for is that trucking company pet friendly. Okay, do they have a pet rider policy, if you will? And the thing about it is, is if your trucking company does not allow pets, does your trucking company allow pets? Is it a pet friendly trucking company? Okay, also what sorts of food are you going to be uh, you know, feeding your animal, okay, and on what kind of a schedule. All right, if you are uh, a driver that's traveling over an irregular route, your hours may be all over the map. Are you going to have the time, are you going to be able to stop often enough to be able to take care of that pet as far as their food and their exercise and them going to the bathroom is concerned, okay? Uh, some pets will obviously travel better than others, and you'll have a situation where um, some pets may want to just, for example, lie down in the floor in your truck and just go, basically go to sleep or get up on the bunk. Okay, and you'll have to determine what sort of a, a discipline your pet is going to require uh, as far as where he or she stays in the truck and if they need to be restrained at all. Okay, uh, what happens if your pet gets sick or needs to go to a vet? Okay, now in our area of South Carolina, uh, we've been taking our dog Shorty to see the vet at the tractor supply company. Not necessarily endorsing that as the best way to be able to uh, have a dog uh, vaccinated on an annual basis, but healthy is, uh, Shorty is a very healthy dog, and so we don't see the need to take him to a vet more often than that. And uh, he gets his, his little annual shots there, but on the road, how are you going to take care of that kind of thing? Okay, and if the pet gets sick on the road, how are you going to clean up after it? Okay. Also, there could be a number of pet restrictions. Okay, I've never heard of this happening. In fact, I have an entire page about pet travel on our website. We have a lot of questions here uh, from people who have actually taken their pets on the road with them. But, for example, are there certain shippers and receivers that refuse a pet to be on their premises? Okay, for example, uh, if you wanted to walk your dog while you were being loaded or unloaded, would you be able to do that? Is there a grassy area where that can happen? Or would there be a restriction there? Okay, if you are in the habit of going back and forth across a border, say from United States to Mexico or United States to Canada and back, are you going to be allowed to uh, take your pet into another country with you and back out? Okay, so all these are considerations that you will need to be able to, to make in advance. Okay, uh, how much does your motor carrier charge per month for your pet to ride with you? All right, uh, we have not had any sort of feedback regarding uh, what drivers think, uh, which pet makes the best traveling companion in a truck. Okay, some people uh, we know, uh, one particular owner operator we know uh, has a very small dog and we know of a lady who has a cat in her truck. All right, so what advantages, disadvantages are there in having a pet in the truck? Obviously, uh, being a companion 
but there's also the high risk for distraction okay something happens to the dog or whatever or the cat in the truck okay it could be very distracting to the driver just like a child could be uh, potentially so um, what if the dog has to go to the bathroom and there's nowhere to go okay um, what if there's literally nowhere to go okay and could you be fined for having that uh, animal um, go to the bathroom in some place that's not allowed okay uh, we will always uh, take with us now when we go to an area park a number of plastic bags so that if shorty uses the bathroom on the premises we clean up after him okay can you be a fine for allowing your pet to do certain things um, outside of your truck all right talk about uh, regular routine health care how often do you have to stop to let your pet out? Okay, obviously if uh, an animal has a small bladder, they're going to have to go more often. That means that you're going to have to stop the truck more often. That means you're not going to be able to make as many miles in the course of, a, uh, of your, um, their, your driving time during your hours of service. All right, if the pet is unrestrained, um, uh, is that going to be a distraction for you? All right, how do you restrain your pet? Is there a limit to the size of the pet? In other words, the number of pounds that a professional truck driver can have in or should have in his or her truck. Uh, does the weight of your pet and the pet supplies affect the payload that you can take on your truck? All right. How do you balance the pet's needs uh, when you have a long distance to travel or uh, to deliver a time sensitive load? Do any shippers or receivers disallow the pet on their premises? Right, I'm just looking uh, through some of these that you'll need to bear in mind. Also, in our experience, although we have never purchased pet food on the road, it is our concerted opinion based upon what we've seen in the stores versus what we've seen in the truck stops that the truck stops charge more for, say, a bag of dog food or a can of dog food than a regular store would. Okay, so responsible pet ownership costs money, but there are ways to save money on pet care. Some of them are DIY or do-it-yourself, while others can only be handled by a professional. Okay, I'm not seeing any comments or questions tonight, but if you do have comments or questions about this topic, please feel free to get in touch with us either underneath this video or on our website, truckdriversmoneysavingtips.com. All right, uh, caring for a pet who travels with you full-time presents a, a different set of challenges from one that is home-based. Consider the full scope of needs for a pet before you get one and take one with you in your truck. Food, water, elimination, temperature, sleeping, health care, etc., and the impact that having one or more animals in your truck can present. Okay, there's a lot to consider before you take an animal on the road, and some of these can be costly, so consider in advance what it is that's going on. One of the things that I would recommend is if you know someone from your trucking company who already has an animal in their truck, by all means talk with that driver and find out specifics about pros and cons and costs and this sort of thing so that you know in advance uh, what you're heading into before you start this all by yourself. Okay, I'd like to hear more from you about that. I'm going to be listing the URL for our pet travel page underneath in the comments. So if you would please let me know how this um, adds value for you, and I would appreciate your uh, joining us tomorrow night for Motivated Monday. It's going to be an exciting broadcast. Okay, this is Vicki Simons with TruckDriversMoneySavingTips.com, and I hope you're going to have a great Labor Day weekend tomorrow on your holiday off, assuming that you have your holiday off. And until next time, my husband Mike and I wish you safe travels and lots of money-saving opportunities on the road. Have a great night. Thanks.